do you want? Uh-oh, come over by the fire. It's cold tonight. We don't get many visitors out here. People don't care much about shepherds. We are the most despised class of people here in Israel. All the, the proper folks down the road in Jerusalem, they think we are, uh, they don't want anything to do with us. They think we are this. I, I won't say that some of them are not. Don't worry about your poor stuff yet. Yeah, Does the smell bother you? You know, I didn't want to see myself. You know, we are out in the fields for weeks at a time. We don't have many opportunities to watch. Of course, with so many children. Oh, at least we are out in the open air. I love these dark, crisp nights when the stars are so thick. I wouldn't take that with, with a light in the city. Although, I like to go out to the temple more often. What? You, you think just because we are shepherds we cannot love God? What about King David? He was a shepherd, a man after God's heart he was. And he loved the temple. But you like everybody else who looked down on us because we don't observe all the religious traditions. What is it that you want from us? The voices of Christmas? Do you want to know if we are one of those voices? Yes. We are the voices of the Trinity. Oh, how can I forget? <coughs> Chapters don't get much examined in life. Are there is, are spent out in the fields with the animals searching for so little grass we can find. In the evenings, uh, we take the jeep to a shelter, pen, for a chip fall. And then we take to watching. There's still lions and uh, other wild animals in many places. That night was like any other. I was tired. It was cold. Uh, it was quiet. The fire felt good against the cold. Then, a blinding flash, well, the darkness was split by a blinding flash. We fell to the ground and fear completely overcome. I remember covering my head and my eyes. I was terrified. Someone, some being was there. It was the angel of God. The angel told us that earlier that evening, just across the fields, in the village of Bethlehem, the Messiah had been born. The one, the one all our people were waiting for. He even told us how to find him. To seek him in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. I thought that's true. That's how the Messiah should be. He should not be wrapped in bundles of clothes and in a manger. He should be wrapped in purple at the king's palace or maybe at the temple itself. But what do I know? I'm only a shepherd. We, was, we were used to begin to recover our senses, but this angel was joined by a whole army of angels. Suddenly, suddenly the sky was filled with them. They were all praising God. Glory to God in the highest. It was louder than the rolling thunder, the booming voices of this angelic host. Then they finished. Just as quickly as they came, the angels were coming. We look at one another. We couldn't stay there. We had to leave the fields. We had to look for the Messiah for ourselves. The village was crowded with many people who were in town for a big Roman census. So many people. We went to the inn, to the stable, out there. And there we were, a gaggle of dewy shepherds. A man we took to be the, to be the baby's father <coughs> stopped us just inside the door. Anxious to preserve his wife's privacy, I think. We tried to spring him around the angels, and then a soft voice from the baby's mother called, It is all right, Joseph. Let him in. We make our way to the back of the stable, and there was the baby. Something to make the angels sing in a chapter cried. Oh, I wouldn't trade this moment, even if I can be the sweetest smelling priest at the temple. <laughs> But what could a shepherd do? We fell on our knees before him. We lingered for a while and talked to the parents. 
I, I told them about the angel, and was going to tell us about the child. And then he even told us to seek him in a manger. It's how we knew he was the Savior, Christ the Lord, I said. And then the, that one angel was joined by an army of angels, all praising God for that child. We have to come and see for ourselves. We have to come and praise him too. Now, you are thinking, this all sounds very crazy. Shepherds, why will God reveal the, the birth of the Messiah first to shepherds? I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not complaining. We finished talking, and then the stable took while we were all looking at that baby. Then, for some reason, I thought of the four lepers of Samaria. Maybe you know the story. At some time in our history, the Syrians besieged Jerusalem, and the city was starving. So, four lepers decided to give themselves up to the Syrians in hopes of getting some food. But when these lepers arrived to the enemy camp, they found them empty. All the Syrians were gone. These lepers went ten to ten and found food, water, clothes, and everything they could want. They too wondered at the good fortune. So one of the shepherds said, this is a day of good news and we cannot remain silent. So they went back to the city and told everyone of their good news. Now that's how I felt. We, the undeservers, and not so much better in many nights than lepers, we have found the Christ child. Others must hear the good news too. So we learned that kind of story and told everybody we saw that the baby had been born in Bethlehem. Somehow, God had decided that we, simple, smelly shepherds, will be the first ones to spread the word that the Savior had come. The Pharisees in Jerusalem who studied the law and kept all the commandments, they were not the first ones. Lonely, lonely shepherds became the voices of declaration. We join the voices of Christmas. We are the voices of declaration. You will not recognize our names, but that night, God took those who were last and made them first, first to declare the tidings of great joy. 